Modern history has been shaped by conquest. The conquest of the world by Europeans. The conquistadors led the way. A few hundred men who came to the new world and decimated the native population. The secret of their success? Guns, germs, and steel. Ever since, people of European origin have dominated the globe with the same combination of military power, lethal microbes, and advanced technology. But how did they develop these advantages in the first place? Why did the world ever become so unequal? These are questions that Professor Jared Diamond has spent more than 30 years trying to answer. One of the most original thinkers of our age, Diamond has traveled the world looking for clues. He set himself a daunting task to peel back the layers of the past and explore the very roots of power in the modern world. Whatever I work on for the rest of my life, I can never work on questions as fascinating as the questions of guns, germs, and steel, because they're the biggest questions of human history. What separates the haves from the have-nots? How have guns, germs, and steel shaped the history of the world? Jared Diamond's quest to uncover the roots of inequality began in the rainforests of Papua New Guinea. Oh, me, me look up. Oh, 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 oh. Diamond is a professor at UCLA in Los Angeles. He's a biologist by training, a specialist in human physiology. But his real passion has always been the study of birds. I love watching birds in this place. I began watching birds when I was seven years old in the United States. Then it was just a matter of identifying them. I came here when I was 26 years old to New Guinea, and it was love at first sight. Look, 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 look. Diamond has been making regular trips to New Guinea ever since. Why is Pito, is Pito? Why and is now a leading expert on the bird life of the island. Morning, one talk. Morning. But in the course of his field work, he's become just as curious about the people of New Guinea. You go find a fish. 20 fish he got? That's old number two bush power cry arm. Ah, ah, ah. Oh, ah, ah. Over the years, I've gotten to know and like thousands of New Guineans. The name belong again, you talk? Name, name belong? Yeah, nine. Yeah, nine. Yeah, nine. I've learned several of their languages, and much of what I know about birds I picked up from them. That's a hard work. There have been people living in New Guinea for at least 40,000 years, much longer than on the continents of North and South America. Look them, look them, look them. Look them, one, two, three, four, five, six, Pella. They're among the most culturally diverse and adaptable people in the world. 
so why are they so much poorer than modern Americans? The question was put to Diamond bluntly by a man called Yali, whom he met on a beach more than 30 years ago. Why you white men have so much cargo and we New Guineans have so little? Yali's question really threw me. It seemed so simple and obvious, and I thought it must have a simple and obvious answer. But when he asked me, I had no idea what that answer was. Why you white men have so much cargo and we New Guineans have so little? New Guineans use the word cargo to describe the material goods first brought to their country by Westerners. Cargo was regarded by many as evidence of the white man's power. It was treated with an almost religious reverence. For their part, Western colonials typically believed that power was determined by race. They saw themselves as genetically superior to the native population. To them, it was only natural that they should have so much cargo and New Guineans so little. <laughs> to me, any explanation based on race is absurd. I know too many really smart New Guineans to believe there's anything genetically inferior about them. It's their ingenuity and their quickness to learn that have always impressed me. They can go empty-handed into some of the most difficult environments on Earth, knock up a shelter in a few hours and survive. Me try and just tell a step. Just tell a rope he's strong and up and up and up and up. I wouldn't know where to start. In this environment, I'd be helpless without them. So why didn't these ingenious people invent metal tools? Or build great cities? Or develop any of the other trappings of modern civilization? The world that I'm from is so different the modern U.S. is the richest, most powerful state on Earth. It's crammed with more cargo than most New Guineans could ever imagine. But why? That's what Yali wanted to know. How did our worlds ever become so different? Diamond realized that Yali's question was far bigger and more complex than it first appeared. It was really about the roots of inequality. A question as old as human history itself. Why, since ancient times, have some societies progressed faster than others? What allowed the Egyptians to build great pyramids while most of the world was still scratching out a living. How did the Greeks ever develop such an advanced civilization? Or the Romans? Or the Maya? All great civilizations have had some things in common. Advanced technology, large populations, and a well-organized workforce. If I could understand how those things came into existence, then I'd understand why some people march faster than others during the course of history. Diamond set out to explore the division of the world into haves and have-nots. It was a massive challenge that few scholars would have dared take on. He was a scientist, not a historian. How could he possibly solve the great puzzles of human history? 